<laughs> now, that's not true. Now, see, see, now that's diplomacy here. He's just called them a bunch of idiots, but <laughs> in a way that they wouldn't understand or maybe even wouldn't be offended by. Now, we want to show you some contrasts. We have some, uh, some clips from Reagan's famous 1964 speech that he gave for Barry Goldwater and some other speeches that he's given later on, his 1981 inaugural address, the 84 inaugural address, State of the Union address, uh, some things during the 1980s. And you'll see a remarkable consistency of belief. You'll even hear some of the same lines used. And your first reaction might be, well, he's just repeating the old thing. It, 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 why did he say something new? And the thing you ought to realize is this is representative of a principled, consistent set of values. Uh, and this is in the simplicity and the brilliance of Ronald Reagan. You Republicans that are running for president and the Republican Congress can learn a lot from here. You don't hear him talking about, well, we need a seven-year balanced budget scored by a CBO and make sure that the upside works on the downside, look at the outside and the inside. There's none of this complicated rhetoric. It's just simple philosophy aimed at every American's heart. Here is Reagan talking about the growth of government from 1964. No government ever voluntarily reduces itself in size. So government programs once launched never disappear. Actually, a government bureau is the nearest thing to eternal life we'll ever see on this earth. Now, another, another comment. This is from 1984, the, uh, in January, the State of the Union Address, and it's on the same subject, the growth of government. It's just the tendency of government to grow for practices and programs to become the nearest thing to eternal life we'll ever see on this earth. And there's always that well-intentioned chorus of voices saying, with a little more power and a little more money, we could do so much for the people. For a time, we forgot the American dream isn't one of making government bigger. It's keeping faith with the mighty spirit of free people under God. Uh, that is remarkable, consistency and simplicity, but it cuts right to the essence of the matter. Easily understood and agreed with, or two, uh, by most people. Now, here's another contrast, and this is about the, uh, the government spending deficits, the tax burden. Again, we go to 1964 and the famous Goldwater speech. But I have an uncomfortable feeling that this prosperity isn't something on which we can base our hopes for the future. No nation in history has ever survived a tax burden that reached a third of its national income. Today, 37 cents out of every dollar earned in this country is the tax collector's share. And yet our government continues to spend $17 million a day more than the government takes in. We haven't balanced our budget 28 out of the last 34 years. We've raised our debt limit three times in the last 12 months. And now our national debt is one and a half times bigger than all the combined debts of all the nations of the world. Now we'll move forward to 1981, 17 years later, an inaugural address, same subject. But great as our tax burden is, it has not kept pace with public spending. For decades, we have piled deficit upon deficit, mortgaging our future and our children's future for the temporary convenience of the present. To continue this long trend is to guarantee tremendous social, cultural, political, and economic upheavals. You and I, as individuals, can, by borrowing, live beyond our means, but for only a limited period of time. Why then should we think that collectively, as a nation, we're not bound by that same limitation? We must act today in order to preserve tomorrow.